Okay, guys, we're going to go ahead and start. I did start recording. So uh, my name is Jeff Wasileski, and welcome to Tropical Fruit Tuesday. Today, we're going to talk about a subject you might not have known what I was talking about when I put it out there. It's called Tropical Fruit CSI, so Crime Scene Investigation. We're going to look at some problems, uh, and we're going to try to figure out what went wrong. So that's the topic for today with Tropical Fruit and welcome to Tropical Fruit Tuesdays. And again, you will be on mute, so put your um, questions in the chat. I'm trying to look at the chat as we go, so if you have questions, you can put them there. Um, so Tropical Fruit Tuesday, Tropical Fruit CSI today, and coming up, we have planting tips and tricks on May 11th. I'll also be giving that talk tomorrow night to the Rare Fruit Council International, that'll be a live talk. That'll be a fair child. Um, then June 8th, Tropical Fruit IPM, Integrated Pest Management, a very important subject. And then in July, we go back to the mango in South Florida. July is mango month, so we'll be talking about that. Okay, so I want to let you guys know I am from UFIFAS Extension. We have an extension office in every single county, all 67 counties. We also have research centers. There is one down in Homestead next to my office. And there we have a tropical fruit specialist. We have a tropical fruit entomologist. We have a tropical fruit plant breeder. So I use the information that those guys give me and I extend it out to you. So that's extension in a nutshell. And I always wanna sort of talk about where you can find information. So on the right, you have an EDIS document, which we'll talk about in a minute. So when you're finding information, number one, be very careful. Don't just look up something on the internet and take the first thing that it says. That's not often the true thing. Be very careful with posts on Facebook, uh, YouTube. You, you can get real good stuff or bad stuff. I like to watch like two or three or four things on the same subject and that way I get a good idea. And um, I have TFT there, Tropical Fruit Tuesdays. All the ones I've done in the past are on YouTube. So if you go to YouTube and search Tropical Fruit Tuesday in the YouTube search bar, you'll find all the old Tropical Fruit Tuesdays. And uh, I'll be putting this one up probably by Friday. So Edith. EDIS is the University of Florida database. And if you were to type in a search bar, EDIS space UF space mango, you would get this document to the right. And it has information on different cultivars, how to plant it, how to prune it, how to fertilize it. It's probably about 15 pages long. So many, many subjects there in EDIS and you can't get it into EDIS unless it's peer reviewed. So that means it's really good stuff, okay? Um, if you can't find it with University of Florida, which you probably can, you can try um, typing in something to the search bar and then space edu. That will get you to um, uh, university websites. Um, one example is breadfruit. We don't grow a lot of breadfruit here. So if you look up breadfruit space edu, you can find stuff from University of Hawaii where it's easier to grow because it's tropical there. Another great place to get information and a lot of you on the call today are master gardeners. That's a great place. And finally, and this ties in with our subject, your garden or your grove is the number one place to get information. If you see it with your own eyes in your garden or your grove, then you know it's true. And if you're looking at your garden or your grove, every day, every other day, if you're scouting it, if you're taking your coffee, you're walking around, you're taking a look. And every time I go to work, I get my coffee and I walk around the grove at work, our demonstration garden. And I see what's going on. I see any problems before they really get started. And that's a big part of Tropical Fruit CSI is really paying attention. And you can train yourself to pay attention. This is not a skill that you can't learn, you can learn that. Okay, 
So we're gonna do this, this talk today in really two halves. First, we're gonna look at some pictures of problems and I'm just gonna kind of go through them quick. These are problems that you very well often see or they look like a problem and they're not really a problem. So we're gonna go through those fairly quick and then we're gonna get to a part that I call tropical fruit CSI, which is always a part of my master gardener talks. Um, and that is we're gonna look at all the factors that would cause your tree not to flower or fruit, almost all of them. Okay, the first thing we're looking at here is a jackfruit and that is a male flower. Jackfruits have either male or female flowers. And I get a lot of questions. People say, oh, my jackfruit are drying up. They're turning black. They have a fungus. So there's the female flower. See, it has a lot more uh, ridges, not as smooth. And then the female will get pollinated and turn into a fruit. Here it is on the right, getting bigger. And the male just withers away and turns black. Um, so a lot of times when a jackfruit is young, it will have only male flowers. And in that case, it looks like little fruit and it looks like they're turning black, but they're really not. They're just male flowers. And the females will come later when the tree is big enough to hold these gigantic fruit. Because remember, this is the largest tree born fruit in the world, the jackfruit. Okay, this is a very typical symptom that you'll see on many plants where you have the green veins and yellow around it. That's typically iron deficiency. If you see it throughout the entire plant, it could be nitrogen, but you're usually gonna see it on the new leaves and that's iron deficiency. This is a mame that you're seeing here, but you can see that on very many, many, many different type of, of tropical fruit. This is severe iron deficiency on a guava. You see the new um, leaves coming out these little ones, they're, they're white. They're all the way white. They're, they don't even have any green left. Here you see this one down below that's got some green veins. So this is also iron deficiency, but very severe. Now here's something that I get calls about that looks like it could be a problem, but it's not. A lot of times plants, when they come out with new leaves, they're a different color from the rest of the leaves and they're just not mature yet. Once they mature, they'll turn green. Uh, this one is a mango and it has all these new leaves, but that's perfectly fine. That's how they look. Sometimes they're orange, sometimes they're red, sometimes they're like this, sometimes they're like green, but not a true problem. And this is a carambola that's just losing leaves. So this is a natural process. If you were to see leaves like this and they're sort of at the bottom, Leaves are dropping off, that's completely normal, nothing to worry about. And here is a plant you might not recognize, this is avocado. And the new leaves are coming out red, so um, you might say, oh, what's wrong with my avocado? But like I said, nothing wrong at all, it's totally normal. Okay, this is one of the only problems that sapodilla have. This is sapodilla, also called nisporo, and it gets these little caterpillars that like to get on the new leaves and sort of close the leaves up. Um, and then the caterpillars can eat the flowers, they can eat the fruit. So that's an issue with sapodilla. That's really the only problem that I can think of that sapodilla has. So if you see that, or if you see frast on your flowers, little webbing, then that, those are caterpillars. Okay, this is something very common. And once you start seeing this, this is a good time to start paying attention because it means that you probably have scale or aphids or mealybug or something. When you see it on a mango like this, and this is called sooty mold, when you see that, you almost always know that you have scale. And if we look at the back mango leaf here, um, that brown spot right there is a scale. Um, so this is called sooty mold. It's a fungus, but you don't treat it with a fungicide. You actually try to get rid of the scale. And what I would do, if this were just an isolated tree, what I would do is just wait for the natural predators to come and kind of 
clean it up. You see the city mold is already kind of breaking off here. So this isn't too much of a problem. Uh, Julieta asked with mango leaf burn, is there an easy way to tell if it's caused due to over fertilizing versus anthracnose versus something else? Um, if, it's, if it's true leaf burn by fertilizing or herbicide, it'll look more like just dead areas of the leaf. Uh, if it's a fungus like anthracnose, you'll see little spores if you look at it with a hand lens. And we have a picture of that later that I can show you. Okay, now this is one that if you look at it, you might say, oh, this is minor, this is a MMA, by the way. Uh, and you might say, oh, this is minor element deficiency. We have a problem. And I would say, yes, this needs minor elements, but it's getting caused by something else. So with MMA, if you have the roots sort of sitting in water, they get something called pythium root rot. And it looks like this. And the way I was able to figure this out is I saw this, but then I looked in the well and this was in the dry season and the well, the water was all the way towards the top. So that means the water level was very high and it shouldn't have been that high during the dry season, but, but it was. So that was causing that water in the soil was causing that pythium to sort of wake up and attack the roots of, of the meme. And that will happen with avocados as well uh, with Phytophthora that, that will attack uh, avocado roots if the, water, if the roots are too wet. That disease is kind of always there. And a lot of these things that I'm talking about today, it would be really hard for you just to look at something and know what it is. So you can take samples to the Trek University of Florida Tropical Research Education Center. They have a plant diagnostic clinic. So if you were to take root samples of that man may and say, hey, I think I might have pythium for $40, they can test it and tell you exactly what you have. So it's a really good service. Okay, this is a real common one that I get asked about all the time. This is just lichen on a mango tree. It looks like it's sort of got a disease, but it's not, they're just lichens. So no problem, very natural. Here they are again. So no problem there if you see that, if you see that on other fruit trees. Okay, so citrus. One of the classic things you're gonna see is this citrus leaf miner. You see these little tracks here and it sort of crinkles up. That's citrus leaf miner, which probably would have been one of the top things that will go wrong with citrus. But now we have citrus greening that sort of attacks the roots and makes the roots very weak. Uh, and then that causes the tree to sort of go downhill. And there's, at this point, there's no cure for it. And most citrus across the state already have it. So if you have citrus, go and look at it. If you see this sort of splotchy yellowness, that's probably citrus greening. And you can look it up on the University of Florida website, also through EDIS. You can just type EDIS space UF space citrus greening. It's also called HLB. Uh, so if you see this where you see the mid vein of the, the plant and then there's more yellow on one side than the other, that means it's not nutrients. That's probably citrus greening. Okay, this is another one. This will be more like what Julieta was talking about with burning. So we're going to look at some herbicide damage. Let's see if this works. So this is herbicide damage in mangoes. It's a short little video. So you see herbicide there. You see it's in the grass, the herbicide. We're gonna look at the bottom of these mango trees where the herbicide sort of hit. And you're gonna see, see that burning, tip burn there. Here's some tip burn as well. Sort of looks like fire got to it and then see it. Here's some bigger trees where they sprayed herbicide underneath and you see the burning there on the leaves. 
that. It's all looks burnt rather than black, like uh, or there's a seedling that they could have just pulled out. Instead, they hit it with herbicide. Okay, so that's what herbicide damage looks like. And this would be a true tropical fruit CSI where you, you're there one day and everything looks fine. And then your gardener comes or the ground crew comes and you see that some of the weeds have died off. They've turned, you know, they're dying. So that means they sprayed herbicide, but now you see your plants are sort of getting black or, or brown as well. So you can say, oh, these lower leaves were probably hit by herbicide. Um, Ms. Wilcox asked, have they developed any citrus that are not susceptible to citrus greening yet? Not yet, they do have some rootstocks that they're trying. And I actually today applied to get some of those rootstocks for our grove uh, at work. So we're gonna try those out. They have some rootstocks that they're trying, but nothing Nothing great yet. Okay, here's a guava leaf. And this is just from the cold. It just was a little cold. Guavas don't like a lot of cold. So they turn kind of turn red like this. So this is just cold. I wouldn't even say cold damage because it's not that, that much of a problem. But this would be another tropical fruit CSI where you're paying attention. All the leaves are green. We have a cold front. A couple of days later, they all turn red like this. Then you say, okay, that was probably because of the cold. This is a wilt. This is just wilting. This is just a new plant that needs water. This is an atomoya, and it's just, it's just young and it hasn't been watered. So that's just wilt if you're looking at that. Now this wilt, if we don't give it water, it could turn to, it could turn, start turning brown and it would look like sort of fertilizer burn or herbicide damage, but really that's just dying off from not having enough water. Um, Lee asked, what causes holes in the leaves? Typically when you have holes in the middle of a leaf, it's a snail that did that. It could also be a caterpillar. Caterpillars usually eat from the outside in, but they can make holes. Uh, here's some holes in a leaf on the outside. This is a lychee leaf, and that is very typical. If you see that on a lychee leaf, that is the Sri Lanka weevil. It's a little weevil, and you can probably catch them in the act. And this tip burn at the bottom here, this is a nutrient deficiency, probably potassium. Okay, this is one that I see more often than not, and it's always with lychee or longan. If you see this sort of weird new leaves coming out in your lychee or your longan, this is herbicide damage, specifically an herbicide called 2,4-D. That does not do well with uh, lychee or longan. So if you spray it anywhere around it, even if your neighbor sprays it, it's a hot day, that can volatize and move over to your lychees and cause this damage. I've seen whole groves affected by this when it was the neighbor that sprayed herbicide. It wasn't even the, the lychee grow. Okay, here we have sugar apple and these leaves look terrible. And this will happen every year, sort of going into the winter. They'll look really bad. They'll all drop off and then new growth will come out with new leaves and it will look great. And the new growth will also have uh, flowers on it. So, if you see this on your sugar apple and <clears throat> you're getting towards, towards the winter or the dry season, that's normal. I do get a lot of calls about this as well. Okay, and Dr. Green has put something in the chat if you guys wanna check. It's about the finger lime, which they're starting to grow more and more. And I hopefully have a finger lime or two coming to me from a nursery that I can plant in my grove at work. Okay, so Julieta, you ask about fungus. So this is more of a fungus on a mango. And if we were to 
take our hand lens and look, or a small microscope and look here, we would see spores. So this is more fungal. And then this is more bacteria, where you have the black spots surrounded by a yellow halo. And the way I would try to treat both of these is to keep your trees well pruned, well opened up, plenty of sunshine, plenty of air. Don't water the leaves. If you're gonna water, water the roots instead. Okay, here's something, this would be a tropical fruit CSI where you would go, you take a look and read the signs. So what do we see here? We see a mango tree, very green, very healthy. Underneath it, it's very green and Away from there, the, the grass is not as green. So that um, mango probably got some nitrogen fertilizer, which is not great for mangoes because it causes them to grow really pretty green leaves and not grow um, flowers or not produce flowers and fruit. So this is kind of telling us that something went on with these mangoes underneath. Um, they're also, shading the grass a little that could cause it to be a little greener you look at the rest of the grass though it's very dry so it's not getting irrigated which is good um, but it did get something there under that tree okay so those are all just quick examples and now we're going to talk about tropical fruit csi and we're going to talk about all these different things and these are things that would cause your tree not to fruit. We also have some trees like lychee that need a certain amount of cool temperatures. We have pollination problems, but we're gonna talk about these instead. And you don't need to memorize those or write those down because we're gonna go through them. Okay, so tropical fruit CSI, why won't my tree fruit? Number one question I get asked, I have a tree, it's not fruiting. So what's the problem? So we, what I like to do is ask the client a series of questions. I ask all these questions and then depending on what they say, I can give them an answer of what I think, why their tree didn't fruit. And a lot of times it's too hard to tell by them telling me because they'll tell me one thing, but it's not really what's going on. They'll say, um, they're not fertilizing when they are or vice versa. <clears throat> so a lot of times I'll, I'll do a field visit and go out for, to a grove and take a look at what's really going on. So remember the, the first thing you wanna do is scout. You wanna always be looking, scouting, looking, learning, seeing what's out there. If your mango tree got to this point where it had so much sooty mold, and you just noticed it, that means you're not doing enough scouting. You should have seen that when it first started coming out and maybe try to do something with the, the scale that was there or try to encourage the natural predators by not spraying um, insecticides. Okay, so one thing I ask is, is the tree getting enough sunlight? Is it getting enough sunlight? Is it next to another tree? Is it a grove that has not been pruned? Is it next to a two-story house on the north side? Here's a lychee grove. Um, and you see a lot, of, a lot of shade here. These trees are all big, a lot of wood in the middle and, the, and going up probably to six, seven feet there. So not a lot of light getting in. So if this were to get fruit, the, it would only get fruit on the very top, <clears throat> excuse me, where the sunshine is hitting. So this is an issue. One good thing is it's keeping the weeds down, but it's not good. These trees need to be pruned, not getting enough light. So here's a mango grove that's all spread out, plenty of light. As long as they keep these pruned, you're gonna see good production and good flowering. Okay, another thing that I check, all right, I, this one you really have to check with your own eyes is what's the planting depth? Did they plant too deep? So here's a jackfruit and the guy grew, this was a grower who had many jackfruit that he grew from seed. And <clears throat> some of them look great, and, but 
they were planted at the right depth. This one was planted too deep. And you also see that not only was it too deep, but they used this sort of black muck soil instead of the native soil that you see there. And that caused an issue as well, where the roots were kind of staying too wet or too dry. They weren't in tune with the native soil here. So here's an avocado that was dead that I got called out to take a look at. Actually, I asked if I could look at it because the grower said they had older trees, they were all doing well, but they kept planting young trees and the young trees kept dying. So I wanted to see for myself. So I saw the dead avocado, I pulled it out of the ground, I laid it on the ground. So we're looking at it from up above. So speaking of depth, here's the depth that it was at. And if we go down, 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 maybe this root right here is the first flare root. That's where it should have been planted. It was planted probably two inches too deep. So that was a huge problem. Another problem that we see, which we'll talk about in a minute, here's the, the tree tape and it's biting into the tree. So that's an issue, it's girdling. Up here we see girdling damage from a weed whacker. And then we also see these dead um, weeds here. So we know there was some herbicide sprayed. We don't know how close it got to the tree. So probably about four things going on there that killed this young avocado. So we just talked about um, weed whacker damage. One thing that I would like you guys to do is try to protect your plants. You can do it with a big ring of mulch like this, or you can remove the grass next to the tree for about a foot and a half around in a circle. Um, this one also has a little piece of plastic around the bottom to protect. So here is an avocado from that same grove, pulled out of the ground, laid down, it was dead. Here are the flare roots. So it was planted at the right depth. That's where we want the, to be planted. And, but you see all this girdling from the string trimmer, from the weed whacker. So that's an issue for sure. And this is why these woody trees, the mangoes, avocados, carambolas, mamays, canistel, sapodillas, lychee, longan, they all have this inside where they have phloem on the outside, xylem on the inside. The xylem, the water goes up, the phloem, the energy, and the food goes down. So if you cut that phloem, you're, you're, um, you're starving your tree. So that's what girdling does. So here's my grove at work. These trees are much bigger now, but you see the spacing. So they get plenty of light. Um, and then they all have this little protection. I will tell you right now, my trees are not as well protected. So if anybody wants to do some uh, labor and come help me out, that would be great. Because I need to get the weeds away from the trunk because they are getting hit by weed whackers by the crew. And there's not much I can do about it except protect the trees. Um, be careful with stakes and tags. If you keep a, sta uh, a stake on too long, your tree can get very weak. If you, if you keep it on that bamboo stake real tight for too long, it needs to be much looser so it can kind of move around. If the tree is small enough, you can just take the stake out when you plant it. And then here is a tag that was left on too long. It was metal and it bit into this tree. It was a good idea to put the name, scientific name, but it was left on too long and it bit in. So you know what that's gonna do? That's gonna girdle, that's gonna cut off the flow. Okay, uh, this is at a grove I went to and I believe the gentleman's grove that I went to, he's on this call today. Um, or on this webinar. And this was, these were mangoes. And you see the mangoes in the back doing well. The mangoes next to the neighbor that had this land um, nursery where they're watering every day, they went downhill pretty fast. So they were just getting too much water, too much water. And this is something I never would have known unless I physically went there to see this. So this is tropical fruit CSI where you're going back and looking at clues and trying to figure it out. Okay, this was a real tropical fruit CSI where 
the mother and daughter team of guava growers came to me and said the snails were killing their guavas. So here we have young guavas. This uh, silver stuff is a propagation technique called air layering. So they're air layering them. They have some small fruit. And the young guavas are planted on this rock mound. So I found some dead ones. And this one's laid down on the ground. We're looking down at it. And sure enough, it's full of snails. One, two, three, four, five, six, they're everywhere. So, but these snails were eating the lichens on the tree. They were not hurting the tree. These particular snails don't eat or hurt trees. So what was the real problem? It was the irrigation. Here's a dripper that goes down into this rocky mound and is not getting to the roots of the guava. So they were simply drying up and then the, the snails would get on them and it looked like it was the problem from the snails, but it wasn't. So that was one where I had to really put some clues together. And just to help you out with, with your watering, it's good to have a little rain gauge like this so you know how much rain you got. This is just a $4 rain gauge with a two by four and uh, dug a hole, put a, a little concrete and that's, that's pretty cheap for a rain gauge. Okay, so this is, you see the sooty mold. So we know we're gonna have scale. So we flip it over and we see these things that look like mealybugs. And then we see all the scale. One, two, three, four, five, six, they're all over. But this is actually a, ju a juvenile ladybug that's gonna eat all this scale. So this is one where your scouting comes into play. If you were to see this and not be able to identify it, you might think it's a pest, you would spray and you would kill these things, which are good, but you probably wouldn't kill all the, the scale. So you get yourself in a little bit of trouble. Okay, proper nutrition. This is something I ask. I'll say, what are you fertilizing with? And they say, oh, I, I fertilize all the time with, um, with the same fertilizer I use on my grass. So the grass needs a lot of nitrogen. Mangoes and lychee in particular don't like a lot of nitrogen. So even if you're doing the 839, which is a typical fruit tree special, if you're doing that often enough, that's too much nitrogen, which is its first number for lychees and mangoes. It's pretty good for avocados, carambolas and everything else, but not great for lychees and mangoes. So this is one where they say, yeah, I'm fertilizing every other month and doing this and doing that. That's when I say, well, you're probably giving it too much nitrogen. It's growing too many leaves and not enough. It's not slowing down so it can flower and fruit. So just a quick word of where to put fertilizer. This is where not to, really close to the trunk. This one is actually on the trunk and you have these big clumps. You wanna spread the fertilizer out and you wanna get it out here in the drip line and you wanna spread it. Don't put it in clumps, that's gonna kill the feeder roots. Another thing I'll ask is where did you get your tree? Is it, um, did you buy it? What type is it? What is it a, a Glen mango? Is it a Tommy Atkins mango? Is it a coconut cream mango? What is it? And they'll say, oh no, my neighbor gave it to me. That sort of tips me off that it might be from seed. Or I grew it myself. It's an avocado. You know, I did the little thing. I grew, grew it from seed. So if you grow from seed, your tree is going to be different from the mother tree. It's just like your children are not clones of you. So the mother tree and another tree got together and they made that particular mango seed. So that is going to grow up. And then also the, the things from seed take maybe 15 years, maybe 12 years to flower and fruit. Where if you propagate something like this from grafting, and we have a Tropical Fruit Tuesday on grafting that you can look up. Here is the top part that's sexually mature and you attach it to this young seedling here. And that way the top is a clone of the parent and it's already sexually mature. So it's ready to produce. So that's the difference between asexual and sexual propagation. Asexual is grafting 
air layers, cuttings. These are cloning. These are exact copies. These are uh, sexually mature. On the right, you see sexual propagation from seed. It takes a very long time to finally flower and fruit. And then we don't know exactly what it's gonna be because the parents are a mix. It's not gonna be a clone. So here's a very young mango, probably two years old, and it's already trying to flower. It's too small to flower or to fruit. If that were to hold fruit, it would break the branches. But this is just to show you that they're already such a mature and they're gonna try to flower, which is good. But this one, I would, I would, I removed the flowers. I didn't let it go and have a, a fruit. Okay, so the parent is not the same as a child with the sexual uh, propagation, which is really good in this case. Okay, and then another question I'll ask is when did you prune? How much did you prune? If you prune mangoes, obviously right now they're full of fruit. So you're gonna take off fruit. If you prune mangoes in uh, uh, November, you're gonna disrupt the flowering cycle because they're getting ready to flower. Um, and if you prune, let's say you prune half the tree, that tree is gonna be so wounded that it wants to regrow the leaves and it's not gonna think about flowering or fruiting. So that's another question I ask is, when was it pruned? How much was it pruned? Oh, it was big tree, so I brought it down really low. I had an arborist come in, they brought it down. Well, that's probably not gonna flower now for a couple of years. So that would be a question I would ask. Uh, and then here's a photograph from Dr. Green. This was a mango that he had that, that was um, root bound. And what we could have done with this is give it a little shake test. So you go to the tree while it's in the ground, you grab the trunk and you just very gently shake it back and forth, almost like a rocking. If you see that whole bottom of the ground move, um, then it's probably something like this, where the roots are not out, they're all wrapped together. If, if only the trunk moves, the roots are probably in pretty good shape. If the whole bottom moves, there might be too much water, it might be root bound like this, it might be planted too deep, you have some sort of issue. Uh, Carrie asks, when's the best time to prune mangoes? And then she says, after fruiting, and that's correct, most fruit trees, after the, you pick that last fruit, that's when you wanna prune and you don't wanna prune more than 30%. And you do that um, at that time because that gives it the most time to recover to be ready to flower and fruit again. And you try not to do more than 30% because if you do more than that, it's probably gonna shock it and put out leaves instead. So these are all the reasons why my tree won't fruit. Many of them, not all of them. So here's what we looked at. We talked about scouting as our main key. Are the trees planted in full sun? Are they planted too deep? Is there mechanical damage from a weed, uh, from a, a string trimmer, weed whacker? What's the irrigation schedule? A lot of times it's too much. Uh, is there heavy pest damage? What's the overall health of the leaves? If you see those green veins and yellow, like we saw in that MMA, then we know that we're iron deficient. Um, what's the fertilizer schedule? Oh, I fertilize every other month with uh, a 12 to four. That 12 is the nitrogen, that's too much. Uh, is it a seedling? How old is it? What's the species? Uh, there's some things like black sapote or um, um, Mame Americana where the tree is actually a male or a female. So if you get a male, it's not going to ever flower or fruit, or it's not going to fruit. It will flower, but it won't fruit. So that's why you ask the species sometimes. Um, was it pruned too heavy? When was it pruned? And then finally, uh, you can give it the, the rocking test, I should call it, not a shake test. You're not really shaking it down. Okay, so we've ran through that, and we're right at 244. So I want to remind you, thank you guys so much for coming to Tropical Fruit Tuesdays. And the next one will be planting tips and tricks on May 11th. And June 8th, we'll be talking about tropical fruit, integrated pest management. 
So hope you guys can and make it for that. I really appreciate you guys coming today. I know there's many things you could be doing. So thank you so much for your time. And um, I'll just hold a minute, see if there's any questions. Um, a lot of thank you, so that's great. Thank you guys for coming. Appreciate it, thank you guys, thank you. Okay, everybody, so I'm gonna sign out. I hope you guys have a great rest of your week. Have a great day, and I really appreciate you. Thank you so much. <laughs>